In this video, we're going to solve equations where before we start solving, we do have to simplify one or both sides of the equation. So an equation has uh, two expressions that are set equal to each other. In this case, the left-hand side is the expression just 5. The right-hand side has this expression 7 minus 2 times 4x plus 1 plus 6x. Before we get started with solving, we do want to clean up as much as we can each expression. When we clean up an expression, or when we simplify an expression, we usually do one of two things. If there's parentheses, we want to use the distributive property to distribute whatever's in front of them if there's something being multiplied. And if there's like terms, we want to combine the like terms. When like terms are on, in the same expression, they're both on the right-hand side or they're both on the left-hand side, we, use, we, we combine them as they are. We do not use inverse operations when we're simplifying an expression. All right, let's get started. So first I see parentheses, I'm going to want to use the distributive property. So we're just going to rewrite 5 equals, the 7 is not affected by this, so it's going to be 7, we're going to distribute the negative 2. Negative 2 times 4x is minus 8x, negative 2 times 1 is negative 2, and then plus 6x. Don't lose that negative when you distribute. It's very common that we just assign that negative to the first number. It belongs to the part that's being distributed, so we want to make sure that we change the sign here. Okay, from here on the right-hand side, we do have like terms. We have 7 and negative 2. We have negative 8x and 6x. As I mentioned, they're part of the same expression, so we combine them as they are. We get 5 equals 7 minus 2 is 5. Negative 8x plus 6x is negative 2x. If you're uncomfortable with the variable being on the right-hand side, you can flip the entire equation around using the commutative property of equality. If it doesn't bother you, then that's great, we're just going to leave it like this. Um, we want to get x by itself, so first I'm going to take away 5 from both sides. This 5 was positive, there was no sign in front of it, so we would take away to undo that plus 5. 5 minus 5 is 0. Over here we're left with negative 2x. To get x by itself, we would divide both sides by negative 2. 0 divided by negative 2 would be 0, so we get 0 equals x. If you want to flip it around, you can and say, x equals 0. 0 is a real number. That is the, the one solution that would work here is plugging in 0 for x. In the second equation, we do have to clean up both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. So first, on either side, we are going to distribute. This would be 7x. We're going to distribute a negative 2, minus 2x, minus 18. And on the right-hand side, we're going to distribute the negative 3. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 3 times negative x is positive 3x. On the left-hand side, we do have like terms. We have 7x minus 2x. That would be 5x minus 18 is equal to negative 6 plus 3x. Now, each side cannot be further simplified. Now we want to use inverse operations. I want to get the x terms over on the left-hand side, so I'm going to take away 3x from both sides. And then at the same time, I might want to take the constant and move it to the right-hand side. It's, being, uh, it's a minus 18. To undo minus 18, we will add 18 to both sides. 5x minus 3x is 2x. Negative 18 and positive 18 is 0. Negative 6 plus 18 is 12. 3x and negative 3x is 0. To get x totally by itself, it's being multiplied by 2. I will divide both sides by 2. And we get our final solution is x equals 6. This is kind of like the culminating problem for solving linear equations. It's taking everything that we've done and kind of merging it into one question. So first, we're given a bunch of fractions. Second, we're given cleanup that needs to happen on both the left-hand side and the right-hand side. Let's start with the fractions, because I know we're all panicked. We see these fractions, we're like, say it isn't so. We're going to clear them out. Let's look at our denominators, 6, 9, 2, and 3. What do 6, 9, 2, and 3 all go into? Well, there are infinitely many correct answers, but the one that we're going to go for right now is 18. Uh, it might also, you might also be thinking, well, we could use 36. Absolutely, you can use 36, but since 18 is smaller, that's generally the one that we, we want to go with. So we're going to take each fraction, or each term, excuse me, and rewrite them so that uh, they all have denominators of 18. To get 5 over 6 to have a denominator of 18, I need to multiply it by 3 over 3. This is one term, so 
uh, what you can do is you can take this part of the term and you can just merge it into the numerator. So we might think of this as 2 times x minus 4 over 9 instead. Um, just that way you can tell we don't have to do anything with the x minus 4. It's already part of a numerator. Um, here we have 9. We want it to be 18. So I'm going to multiply by 2. So I'm going to say times 2 times 2. Over here um, we have 1 half x. Again, the x you can just placed in the numerator and rewrite it as x over 2 or 1x over 2, in which case the denominator is 2, so we need to multiply by 9. So we're going to multiply this term by 9 over 9. Don't leave out our 3. That 3 also needs a denominator of 18 in order for this to work. So we're going to take 3, we're going to put it over 1, then I need to multiply 1 by 18. So we're going to say 18 times 1 and 18 times 3. Lastly, our last term, we have 2 over 3x. We can also think about that as 2x over 3. Uh, 3 to get to 18, we would need to multiply by 6. So we're going to multiply by 6 to the numerator and the denominator. All right, let's rewrite this with all of our denominators of 18. Here we go. We get 15 over 18 minus, that's 2 times 2, 4 times x minus 4 over 18 equals... 9x over 18 plus 54 over 18 minus 12x over 18. Okay, now that they all have the same denominator, what we can do is apply the multiplication property of equality that says I can multiply both sides of an equation by the same amount without changing the equality. I'm going to very carefully choose my amount and I'm going to choose to multiply both sides by 18. That will cancel out with the denominators on the left side and on the right side. So I multiply both sides by the same amount. I'm allowed to do that. Every denominator is canceled, and what we're left with is 15 minus 4 times x minus 4 equals 9x plus 54 minus 12x. From here, I want to clean up both sides separately. So on the left-hand side, I need to distribute. That would be 15 minus 4x plus 16. On the right-hand side, I see that I have some like terms here. I have a 9x and a negative 12x. If I combine those, that would be negative 3x. So we get negative 3x plus 54. I don't think we're done with the left-hand side yet because we also have like terms here. We've got positive 16 and positive 15. That's 31 minus 4x equals negative 3x plus 54. I'm going to move over here so that I have a little more room. 31 minus 4x equals negative 3x plus 54. Okay, so each side is as simplified as it can be. We can't combine those because they're not like terms. We can't combine those, they're not like terms. So now we're ready. We're going to get all the x's on the left-hand side and the constants on the right-hand side. If I'm going to do that, I'm going to add 3x to both sides. <coughs> And I'm going to subtract 31 from both sides. Negative 4x plus 3x is negative x or negative 1x. Those cancel, those cancel, and here we end up with 23. To get x by itself, we need to divide or multiply both sides by negative 1. Just for consistency's sake, because we would consider this to be multiplication, I will divide by negative 1. Negative x divided by negative 1 is x. 23 divided by negative 1 is negative 23. So in the end, we end up with a nice integer solution, solution x equals negative 23.